Hey, welcome back guys. Uh, I wanted to get this uh, travel question answer video up for y'all. I know I haven't done one in a while. Um, and this week I got a really good question uh, that a lot of people ask me and I think it's about time I, I answered it or just kind of give you guys some advice on this. Um, so this question came from Edney S. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, your videos are so inspiring. Thank you. You guys inspire me with these comments. Uh, could you please do a video or series on how you entered the travel consultant job field and your journey to build clientele, i.e., did you start traveling and companies reach out to you or did the companies reach out to you first and that nudged you to travel full time? Also, do you offer consulting services for people interested in entering the field? Um, well, so I, I guess uh, what I'll do is I'll break this down. Um, about me, about how I entered this field or this industry, and how other people can kind of break into it a little bit. All right, um, I feel like I'm being interrogated. You got the light over here, it's, all, it's like in the movies. So um, for any, any of you guys, I, I know I have a lot of new followers um, uh, because of everything that just happened in the last couple months. So uh, let me explain a little bit about my background and how I came into this industry. Um, after serving 10 and a half years in the United States military, um, I already had a travel bug from you know traveling the world for 10 and a half years. Um, I ended up going back to university. Uh, once I was finishing up university, um, I kind of just fell into this industry uh, by the way of a nonprofit foundation. I started to promote photojournalism and travel, and you know that's the short way uh, through that story. Um, and really, uh, I started uh, making a living. Well, I actually started making money uh, in the travel industry about six months in uh, into my blog. Um, and like a lot of other travel professionals, uh, I started by blogging. And I still blog, you know, not as much as I used to, but um, that's how I started uh, through a travel blog. Um, I recognized early on that there was a really there was a big, big hole um, in the travel industry, basically for Black people. Uh, for me, uh, you had a ton of these middle-class white solo female travelers, or these white male adventure travelers, or these couple travelers, and none of those groups speak to me at all. I was like, "Yo, I got money. My friends got money. Why you not? Why you not trying to get our paper?" You know. So I really saw that there, there, there's a missing narrative there. And if you look at most top 100 list of travel bloggers or travel professionals, very, very few are people of color. So uh, that became my identity. Uh, I, I started specializing in telling the story of what it's like to travel the world as a black man and helping brands and companies reach that millennial 25 to 35 African-American Latino demographic, which is a very, very powerful demographic um, that a lot of companies still don't mess with. Like they're, they're, there are a lot of companies that still have not realized how powerful that demographic is. So basically, I walked in, uh, I walked into the industry already in a in a underrepresented niche. So anybody who wanted to work within that niche, they had to kind of come through me or come through you know the people that I I, I knew, uh, my colleagues. So I was blessed in that way. Now, uh, for example, if I was a, a white middle class solo female, <laughs> it'd be tough. It'd be tough because. It's very top heavy. It's a very top heavy industry. So um, I came in, I was blessed to have a niche. Uh, now I won't say I, I was lucky. Um, I just recognized a hole in the market and I went out to fill it. So um, long way around, um, I saw early on that there's not a lot of money in travel blogging. Um, there's a lot of money in people selling you travel blogging, but it's not a lot of money in travel blogging. So I started to uh, develop a strategy to transition away from being a travel blogger and to become a, a travel consultant, travel journalist, uh, and a digital content creator. Um, I specialize in teaching brands how to reach a millennial market through their social media strategy and digital content production. Um, and I'll put brands in contact with digital content creators like bloggers. Um, I recently started doing uh, putting together blog trips uh, for clients like Singa, uh, Shangri-La Hotels, Intercontinental, um, I, I'm helping put together an ambassadorship program for an organization called Secret Retreats. Um, yeah, so that's how I kind of ended up in there. A uh, long way around, 
I see holes and I fill those holes just like anybody else. So the first thing that you need to do if you're looking to become a travel consultant or a travel professional is to travel. Um, you have to build authority before you try to sell anything. Uh, so often I see very young um, professionals or people trying to be professionals in this industry who just jump in and expect to get paid. And also a lot of travel professionals are giving terrible advice to very young travel professionals coming in telling them to charge these ridiculous amounts. Uh, I'm one of the people who receives these pitches um, and requests uh, for press passes, um, press stays and review, and, and review stuff. Uh, man, a lot of these proposals, people are coming up with nothing to offer. They have absolutely no authority at all. Um, and what I say by authority, you have to have um, social media followers. And uh, I'm not going to say it's all about social media, but it's a lot about social media. In 2016, if you don't have a social media presence, you don't have a voice. You don't exist, essentially, uh, because the market is, is, is trending towards millennials, that 25 to 35 age range, and that's where they are. That's where the attention is. Um, so you definitely want to build that authority before you start pitching. So get out there and travel. Uh, and I'm not saying you have to uh, constantly travel internationally or go to the Louvre or go to the Maldives or Jamaica. You can travel locally and become a professional. Um, you can travel your city and say, hypothetically, you eat out three days a week at different restaurants, write reviews about those restaurants, build up an authority and put it on your own platform, put it on your own travel blog, don't put it on Facebook. Um, that's somebody else's real estate. So if Facebook decided to totally close, close shop tomorrow, all of your content is gone. But if you put it on your own travel blog, your own site, it's yours forever and you 100% can monetize that how you choose and you can do whatever you want with that. So very first tip is to build your own authority. So these next two tips are going to be specific. Uh, one is going to be travel consultant and digital content for brands. And then the next one is going to be for consumers or individuals. Uh, when you're approaching brands or when you're looking to work with brands, I recommend you look at their social media to find out what image that they are trying to portray or what story are they trying to tell. Um, and if you honestly look at their social media and you see a story that you can't tell or that you can't promote or support, then walk away or don't even don't even think about it. Don't even pitch it because that's not for you. Um, it's important to protect your brand as much as their brand because as soon as they, they look at your portfolio or look at your content or look at what you have online, they're going to ask, how does this person fit with our brand? Do they fit? For example, Kotex tampons probably wouldn't reach out to me to do any kind of work because I'm a male. I have absolutely no reason to use their product or promote their product. But um, I'd say maybe, uh, oh, a brand I work with, say uh, Saucony uh, Shoes because I run. Saucony Shoes uh, and they gear towards male adventures too. So I would work with that brand because there's a story that I could possibly tell. So uh, when you're looking at brands and you're working with brands, make sure that you can provide them with something and they can provide you with something as well. Um, in, in regards to getting paid for your work, um, that's, a real, that's a real tough one uh, because uh, the way that I operate is not how my uh, colleagues operate. Um, how much I charge is not going to be how much somebody else is else charges. Um, I think I, I might do a different video uh, about teaching people about day rates and whatnot, but out the gate, like initially I say within the first six months to a year, don't even think about getting paid for your work. Just think about uh, producing high quality content with high quality, uh, high, visi uh, high visibility brands and that's going to be the currency. Now travel consultant for consumers. Um, th this, this means people who, just people who are coming to you for advice on travel um, and how you can monetize that. Um, I I think it's it, it is mind boggling that I see so many people trying to become travel agents now in 2016. That's like investing in Yahoo. Yeah, Yahoo's still around, but it ain't beating Google. So I firmly believe that you, if you're looking to monetize travel um, travel advice for consumers. Have that as a package on your website or your blog. And remember, notice all of this goes back to having your own real estate, having your own travel blog or website where you provide these services and show your authority all in one place. Um, I see a lot of people are selling guidebooks and, and, and stuff like that, but 
I, I personally think there's far more money in this the one-on-one -on -one consultation. Uh, I've seen people who will charge 30 minutes for a Skype call. Um, I, I've seen people who are charged per itinerary where they'll put everything together and book it like a travel agent. Um, so there's a lot of ways, but the biggest thing is to be honest with people. Like be very honest, especially with new travelers about what they should expect and, and what you can provide. And if you can't provide something, send them to somebody who can. That goes a lot further than you trying to half-ass their itinerary and messing up their vacation. So uh, make sure that you're being upfront and honest about what you can and cannot provide, what kind of discounts you can and cannot get. And in that vein, work with affiliates. Um, work with companies that offer you a kickback. Meaning, for example, Amazon is a huge affiliate for a lot of people. Uh, so if you sell through Amazon, you'll get a certain percent, 4% for every sale, 5%, it depends on what it is. Um, when you work with a company as big as Amazon, there are very there are a whole bunch of different um, travel things that you can you can make money from. Uh, travel bags, the cameras. I affiliate with electronics a lot of because you guys see my blog is very uh, photography and videography heavy. So um, I, I post up uh, cameras, batteries, uh, camera bags, laptops, um, mouses, screen protectors, filters, all that stuff um, is affiliated on my blog. So I make a kickback from that because it's something that I know. Um, you might uh, specialize in uh, hiking boots or you might rain coats or something like that. So there are quite a few different ways to make money um, from the consumer side of things. So uh, the next question is, uh, is, is basically how to find clients. Um, I touched on this a little bit earlier when I was talking about consulting for brands. Um, it, it's, it's kind of a 50-50 thing. At this point, I think brands find me more than I go after brands uh, simply because uh, my blog, well, I've gotten pretty popular uh, the past two years. But when you're new, you're going to be doing a lot of pitching to brands. When you approach brands, and I cannot stress this enough, have an idea. Have, have a vision or a plan laid out syst systematically. Um, for example, Rail Europe, who I'm working with right now, I'm in Copenhagen right now. Um, I, when I pitched, I actually pitched them. When I pitched them, I had an itinerary for the most part set out, exactly what I was going to do, exactly what I was going to produce, how many of everything, a social media posts, videos, articles that I was going to publish, all laid out so when they looked at my proposal they didn't have to guess anything everything was laid out and I specifically put where they fit in in the process that is very important that you can tell a brand and you can show a brand where they fit in you can't just say hey I wanna can you give me a backpack well why 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 would I give you a backpack tell me why I would give you a backpack so you have to always 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 when you're pitching have a plan laid out step by step by step exactly what you're going to do and how it benefits them. That's probably the biggest advice I can give you. Uh, again, like I said earlier, your first couple years, don't pitch for money. Um, wait until you get at least five big brands. In my opinion, I mean, wait till you get at least five big names on your resume to say, hey, I worked with uh, REI, I worked with uh, American Airlines, I worked with H&M, uh, I worked with, you know, whoever, five big brands. And then they can say, and then they can see your work and they can say, okay, this person is worth this amount because. You got to remember, the person that you're pitching, the communications director, the manager, the social media consultant, whoever, they likely aren't the last decision makers and they have to justify working with you with somebody else. Uh, to their boss and they have to put a lot of times they're putting their reputation and their job online for you all right and with that said produce content it, it it in the past three years i've seen so many young travel professionals who promise the moon and don't deliver anything like who will go a year without producing anything on a press trip from a press trip or a sponsored trip over deliver. You need to over deliver. You never ever under deliver or at the. If you say I'm gonna give you two articles, you need to do four articles. Okay, um, that's the only way that you're gonna find a way to eat and you're gonna 
not screw other bloggers that come behind you. Because I cannot tell you how many times brands that I've pitched have said, ah, well, we work with blogger XX and they screwed us over, so we're not really interested in working with bloggers again. So to help everybody, including yourself, produce more than you say you're going to produce. Okay, and the very, very last point. Um, you guys have to learn how business works. There's so many travel professionals or travel bloggers or vloggers or viners or Instagrammers and YouTubers who have absolutely no idea how business works. It's, it's just, it's not that you show up with a whole bunch of social media numbers and you're going to make thousands of dollars. That's not how business works. So learn what ROI is, return on investment. Learn what your day rate is. Learn what you are worth, okay? Learn how to pitch. Learn how to write a contract. Uh, learn how to read a contract. Uh, these are very, very, very basic business things that if you don't know, there's going to, two things are going to happen. Either brands aren't going to work, want to work with you at all, or somebody's going to screw you over. It's really that simple. Learn basics and read a book. Go on YouTube and Google Foundations of Business or, or read a book, Idiot's Guide to Running a Business. If you want to be a travel consultant, you are a business, period. Your name is a business. Minority Nomad and Eclatus, my two, my two websites, are my brands. They are both businesses. They are both registered companies. You need to do that. You need to protect yourself and you need to protect your clients as well. So uh, I want to give a special shout out and thank you to Edney S for sending me this question. Um, I'm going to keep trying to do these as much as possible. Uh, if you guys have been following me, you guys see I pretty much reply to every single comment um, that you guys leave on my videos. Uh, if you have any more questions, I'm sure this video probably brought up a whole bunch more. Leave them below and I'll do my best to get to them uh, all in a timely fashion. Uh, you guys know I'm on the road right now until late November, so I'm, I'm going to be a little slow. Uh, responding sometimes on these 12 13 hour trains that I'm on but uh, please uh, please if you like this video if you like what I'm doing here if you like the advice I'm giving please comment below subscribe share with your friends and let me know uh, what are you guys looking for out of a travel consultant or somebody that's giving you travel advice so again make the world better than you found it and I'll see you guys later